Hello everybody and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 video where today's video we're going to simply be looking at all the Jurassic World Evolution 2 species field guides from the Triceratops back in what was it June or something I think it was June all the way to the Cryolophosaurus that was just released the other day. Now my previous video I did my ranking of them which, if you haven't checked out, go ahead. It should be showing up in a pop-out card or something in the right corner, left corner. I don't know. I, I'm new to this YouTube stuff. Eh, whatever. But we're simply going to be looking at all the 13 species field guides, giving my thoughts, and also kind of explaining why I put them in their rankings. Which, I think we should just get into it and start with the Triceratops, which I'm pretty sure I placed it at, what was it, 5th place? It was 5th place or 6th, I know that. And it surprised me, actually, how much I like it compared to the others. And I think it's because, you know, even though it's kind of the first one which you consider to be the worst, which many people would believe that was something like the species profiles for Triceratops, they considered that their least favorite, and it was the first there. But, you know, I think I like how, despite it um, having some not great effects like you can see when it's doing a threat display near the end its head clips through but you know I actually really like it because it's very simple very calm but it's a perfect way to introduce them it looks good and as we've seen from the other field guides they have been fixing those little problems because like after this one we didn't I don't think we've ever seen um any clipping through their bo own bodies yet so I think that's good to see and from other Triceratops footage we've seen in beta, it does not look like that's a problem anymore. But for this one, being the first, you're not supposed to expect like everything straight away, otherwise it would ruin all the others, which is why I like it. Next is actually the one and only Amargosaurus, which is our first new species. Oh, hold on, I've got a Jurassic World Evolution 2 commercial for it. Get, get, bear with me for a second, please. So, Amargosaurus, which is our first new official species, which I'm pretty sh sure it was in the first trailer. Like, I remember, yeah, it was in the first trailer. It was in the Stampede of Dinosaurs. I remember saying, what is that dinosaur? And then immediately after recording, I realized it was Amargosaurus, but forgot to mention that in the video, so oops. But I gotta say, love this Amargosaurus and it's our first look at the multiple dinosaurs coming out of the hatchery which I'm pretty sure I put this one lower and I think it's because like it gives gave no information apart from this like we get to see it coming two out of the speech field guide and it's a cute animation with one just like wait for me and then oh no I'm I'm sorry like, I love how the other one just looks at him like, calm down, dude, we're just coming out of the hatchery, and he's like, fine. <laughs> like a little kid. The reason why I ranked this so low is actually because, apart from this animation, now looking at the others, it's the only thing that really stands out for this one. Next one is probably many people's least favorite. Like, I know Evolution Square, on her ranking of the Species Fiat Guide, she put this at the bottom, which kind of hurt me evolution square i i don't agree with that i put it in the low ones as well because like it literally shows nothing but i put it higher than the two that were below it because it, it mainly because it was brachiosaurus and this was one of the early ones like it was the third one and it came out only in june actually still so not that far away but one thing that's really interesting about it is you can really see that they're in the early stages of the game here because like you can see like in one shot especially i think it's the second one yeah it's the second one where it shows the neck literally like fully shaking as it moves and it's like god i know it's in a winter area but it's not that cold even while it's in pre in alpha in-game footage and you see it shaking it still looks so good but it's low because simply it doesn't give us anything interesting in the field guide, unfortunately. Next one is the Celiophysis, which I'm pretty sure I put it very high. I think it was in the top half. I want to change that, actually, guys. I'm going to say it's lower. And the reason why is because it was basically completely forgotten about. Like, I completely forgot this species field guide existed un until yesterday when I did the other video and was like 
getting all the species field guides and ranking them, I was like, wait, Celiophytes? Oh my god, I completely forgot about it. Which, the reason why they did for that it's lower is because, like, even though it's a good species field guide, the problem with it is that, like, after this, Celiophysis was completely forgotten. I don't even think anybody got to talk about it or see it. Like, there was some people who had, like, showing an animation of two interacting, but other than that, there was nothing on it. Like, it was basically back to copies, which I'm fine with copies, but I do wish that more Celiophysis information was to be shown. Next one is the Stegosaurus, which I think is many people's favorite. It's one of my favorites. I think I put it at fourth or fifth place. It was fourth or fifth place, I know that. And we get to see a lovely, lovely skins, which I remember when this came out and everybody was believing that this could be them teasing bioluminescence because of the way the purple was sort of, when it was in the shadow, it was lighting up a bit more. And I actually, talked about this in my species field guide analysis if you want to check that out go ahead find the video but still it was really really good to see these skins and of course we get that cute little roll of the stegosaurus which is just totes adorbs and the other one's just standing there like i don't know what's wrong with this guy i don't know him get me out of here help <laughs> so it's so cute just like oh i love grass other ones like you mean you so you're supposed to eat it not rolling it Stop ruining my grass. And then we get the final whack of the tail. Next up is our first of pterosaurs, which we only have two. The first, with this one being none other than the little tiny mischievous Dimorphodon. And I'm pretty sure this was just coming out just after the release of um, Camp Cretaceous Season 3. Like, you know, just when Camp Cretaceous was sort of dying down because no information had been coming out. And we get lovely look at th four of them actually coming out, not three. I remember in my video I s said three were coming out, but no, actually you see one already out, and then two crawling, and then just behind the main one, and you see a third one actually, which looks really nice. I wonder how many, like, certain species, like, maybe you'll be able to have, like, because it's so small, you'll be able to have five, like, I remember they said with something like Velociraptor you could have up to five come out at the same time. Maybe it'll be the same with this. I wonder about like bigger things like Pterandon or Quetzalcoatlus. But Dimorphodon, you know, just flying around and I'm pretty sure I ranked this higher than Pteranodon. I think it was because I was surprised to actually see it. Like I was expecting like, you know, if we were going to get more pterosaurs we would get Dimorphodon because it was a film one. But I kind of wasn't expecting it as a species field guide, especially so early on, because this is only the uh, fifth, no, sixth of them. So I was kind of surprised that we got it so soon. Speaking of the Pteranodon, the next one is the Pteranodon, which I ranked as one of my lower ones as well. And it's because, like, it doesn't show anything. Like, the only interesting thing is in the first shot where you see at the bottom of the screen, a bunch of pterodons like nicking each other for fish. But other than that, you just see it literally flying around and landing on the fish feeder once. But we get better looks at the fish feeding mechanic for pterosaurs like in other things. Like the latest Dev Diary, we saw like, I think it was six trophy analogous going after it and like one literally biting the snout off another, which ouch. Is the Changesaurus, which I remember, oh my god, when that first came out, I could not say it at all. I was like, Kanga, Changa, uh, what? How do you say it? It's Changasaurus, which, gotta say, is a lovely Tyrannosaur to see, which, depending on if what species from the original game we get, if we get Albertosaurus still and Proceratosaurus, that'll mean we have confirmed four Tyrannosaurids, including T-Rex, of course, because, you know, we ain't gonna have a Jurassic World game or Jurassic Park game for that matter, without the T-Rex. That's literally impossible, my dear. Or sir, you know, I'm not gonna be, I don't know who's watching this, it could be both, it could be none, or, you know, what, whatever, let's move on. Change of source, the Pinocchio Rex. And I love this shot where he's like, got his head tilted and looking at the camera's like, uh, oh hi, how you doing? Am I on camera? 
and then I love this one where you see one of them just, you know, sniffing the ground, and then the other just like sort of barks at him, and then as soon as that happens, he turns and snaps at him. It's like, you know, hey, you don't bark at me, I'm in charge, and the, then they just sort of separate and, you know, all good, and then you get a lovely roar. And I must say, these guys have the best skin so far. The next one is our first aquatic reptile, which, as you guys saw, those two both did really bad in my rankings, with Mosasaurus, as we are looking at now, being the second worst in my opinion. And I'm going to explain both of my reasonings for both. The reason why Mosasaurus was higher than Plesiosaurus which, spoiler alert, but when we get to Plesiosaurus, we'll talk about what I like and what I don't like. But the problem with both these is that there is, like, nothing for them. Like, there is no new information about them. And the problem with both of them is that they came after everybody like the Game Beaver and Best in Slot were able to play parts of the game, including Challenge Mode, where they were able to unlock both Mosasaurus and Plesiosaurus. Like, now let's come to number one, in my opinion, with the Queen herself, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which, I've gotta say, the best part is definitely the end with the Eddie Carr reference, which, rest in peace, Eddie, you've been dead for decades now, but, you know, we still miss you. And, I gotta say, I love the skins here, especially the, um, the white T-Rex, actually. It sort of reminds me of the female raptor from JP3, you know, with the white skin and sort of dark spots on its back, which they're not black spots like it was for the raptor, but, you know, it's very similar. And it actually has a little purple stripe in the middle of its head, actually, which looks really nice. And the animation of them colliding their heads is excellent, which is why I put it at number one, because, like, we get to see two beautiful skins, we get a lovely Lost World reference, and we also even get to see them interact with each other, which is a species field guide that I say gets everything we need. It doesn't spoil too much, and it gives us just enough to be really entertained by it. Are you not entertained? The Sinister Velociraptor, which I gotta say was quite enjoyable. I ranked it as number two, and to be honest, I would have ranked it lower if it didn't show the pack animation because like that was something we knew for months like we knew that they could attack a t-rex we knew that they could actually attack dinosaurs together and stuff unlike with the first game where they would just you know be completely antisocial with each other now we got to see it and we get to see them actually run together and we get a lovely animation of them hopping on each other with one missing and then the other chasing that one away. And the skins are just really nice, especially that green and yellow on it. My god, it's beautiful. And then of course, the main piece is that raptors attack the Sinoceratops, which this also did confirm Sinoceratops' return, which was a major thing as well. But still, that animation looks so good. The Plesiosaurus, which was my lowest, even though, like, I, I love Plesiosaurus, guys. It's one of my favorite aquatics of all time. Probably many of yours, of course, as well, because, like, rocking with dinosaurs and all those other things and, like, the way it's shaped, it's beautiful. Although, this ki version kind of looks like a snake with flippers, actually, kind of. Like, look at that head, it's so creepy. Ugh. For the final piece of resistance, the one that came out yesterday and actually, well, surprised everybody, which, funny story. So, I was planning on recording this video the day that Cryolophosaurus came out, but then, because like, I was waiting at 8 o'clock as the normal time when it was supposed to release, and I was like, all right, I'll get ready, didn't show up. I waited like 10 minutes, I was like, are they not doing one? A few minutes later, I was like, okay, I give up because it was like 15 minutes late, and I decided, you know what, I'll get ready to record. I was getting everything set up, and then boom. Just as I'm about to record, notification, Cryolophosaurus Species Field Guide, 9 o'clock. And I'm like, really? Really? Just as soon as I gave up, they record. They brought one. Which, kind of on me, actually. I should have expected something, like a trick. But, you know, it was such an enjoyable one, definitely still. Cryolophosaurus was, again... Something I did not think I would see. Also, I love how they reference its Elvis head. 
and stuff. One thing I do like about this one, despite it being not really much except for like, you know, showing them do a lovely dance in the middle, one detail that Swerve pointed out about the Space Field Guide that I absolutely agree with is how they have the same pattern and stuff, but the way that one of them is much brighter than the other, but they feel like they could be in the same group and stuff. They're not like different versions and stuff, which I definitely agree with, especially because like dinosaurs in the first evolution game, you either had two really dull ones that like were two far different colors that they didn't work, or you had explosive ones, but they just didn't feel natural. But this guy, even though it's dull and sort of not popping out, they feel so much more live-like, especially because they, they contrast each other with the front one being so much brighter than the other one. It fits so well, actually, and I really do like that. And I also love this dance, and it's weird that this is the only time in the Species Field Guides that they're in slow motion, because who knows, maybe they just wanted to show the grace of these lovely creatures, which can't blame them. And we get a little itching animation of the last shot of the Cryolophosaurus, which one thing I want to point out that's a lovely detail that I actually missed in my breakdown is if you notice when it itches, it actually the skin actually folds towards and then flips back as soon as the claw releases, which is so good. Like you could make it that like it's doing an itch animation, but it doesn't show that detail. The fact that they added that little animation, it just breathes more life into this for me. I love it. But that is it guys. Those are all the species field guides so far. We could be getting more as the game comes out. We'll obviously get some for like DLCs for Jurassic World Dominion. And maybe even we'll get one more. There's rumors actually that we'll get one more just on the day of launch, which I have a feeling it's going to be either something like Spinosaurus, oh, excuse me, or even Indominus Rex, actually. That's what I have a feeling. But leave in the comments, guys, what are your rankings? Or, you know, check out the other video and leave comments in those. And also, what are some things you like and dislike about each species field guide? If you've enjoyed this video, guys, I would appreciate the like. And if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. And of course, guys, when the game comes out on, what is it, November November 9th, don't worry, we will be playing the hell out of that game. Trust me, I've already pre-ordered it. It's ready to go. As soon as we hit the day, I'm going to be recording. But until then, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't, well, then I apologize for failing you. But if you have, leave the like, subscribe to join the hunt as we're almost set. 1.8 thousand subscribers hopefully we can reach that at least before the game's release and until next time i'll see you later bye bye